in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed A dimension that most people do not know and understand about wealth we'll just introduce it and then we'll pray the first physical law now we're discussing the physical laws remember I taught you just reduce the volume a bit now listen please I taught you that both the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance and the physical laws of wealth and abundance are all called kingdom laws it is the same power of God that is back of their results is that true that means when you engage spiritual laws the power that makes the laws work is the power of God when you engage the physical laws the power that makes the laws work is still the power of God it's just the dynamics of their operation that is different so do not dichotomize it as if God you go there with the realm of the spirit here common sense or the universe is giving me results there is no universe outside of God there is the Bible says, once have I spoken and twice have you heard that all power belongs to God. So what I'm about to teach you now, the reason why it works is because the power of God is back of it. Are we together? The first physical law that governs wealth and abundance is called the law of mental transformation. Please write it down. The law of mental transformation. You want to access the blessings and the wealth of the kingdom having understood absolute surrender your tithing your giving now you want to learn how to manage to multiply and to preserve wealth the law of mental transformation that your thoughts will eventually translate to your physical reality please pay attention for a long time people in church have not been taught that their belief systems and their thinking has a relationship with their financial levels and also their destinies you hear them you, you hear the church the body of christ talk a lot about mindset but i think we've not been as extensive as we should be in helping believers understand the role that a transformed mind has to play as far as the wealth of a believer is concerned the law of mental transformation proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 let's hurry up there's so much to do it says for as he thinketh in his heart the word heart is usually interchanged for mind for as he thinketh in his heart the bible says so is he it didn't say so he will be it immediately equates your thoughts with your reality are we together now most people who desire to prosper financially speaking would not care about their their mental state and most people feel that all it takes to prosper is capital plus a business idea all it takes is just some money or somebody to help me that is not true many people have tried it again and again and it did not work your thoughts your mental state has a lot to do with your prosperity as it is in your mind 
so it will manifest in your life that is the truth the realities that are captured in your thoughts and your belief systems will eventually find physical expressions within your life you are your reality is a product of your most dominant thought this is true you have to believe this in genesis chapter 11 we we'll read from verse 1 to 6 genesis chapter 11 from verse 1 to 6 this was nimrod kush and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech uh-huh and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of china and they dwelt there and they said to one another go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly and they made brick for stone and slime they had for mortar verse 4 and they said they are speaking to themselves now go to let us build us a city listen carefully and a tower whose top may reach to the heavens the goal let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth now theolo theologians hold on please verse 4 theologians still argue as to whether this was a spiritual concept or there was a building physically at least the bible did not tell us this was a parable so it's safe to assume that these people meant it literally are we together so we see nimrod kush and the people proposing to themselves that we are going to build a city and a tower and we want the top to reach the skies the heavens they had not started the building they were only communicating an idea and they agreed with one another verse 5 if you're a christian please read one to read and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded one more time verse five hold on the fact that the lord came down meant he saw something real the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded that means it was finished already they had not started physically they were communicating that idea and yet in the realm of the spirit a building was rising god had to come and say who is building the power of thoughts that everything in life is built twice first in your mind and then physically if you ever try to build anything physically that is not yet built in your mind you will lose it believe me when i tell you this everything in this kingdom is built twice first in your mind and then your physical reality are we together now please put that scripture again and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded not the children of men were considering no as they were discussing it their minds were receiving it that womb of the mind was receiving the seed something real was growing it's not satan that came to see it it's not an angel that came to see it god himself do you know this is an interesting scripture because holy spirit is not mentioned here satan is not mentioned here the only thing mentioned here are men and thoughts and yet the word impossible as far as limitation is concerned is also used here verse 6 hmm. and the lord said behold the people is one and they all have one language now from the earth standpoint and this they begin to do physically what has finished he said they had built it now they want to do it physically and god himself is speaking he says and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have so the name of that thing that was building in the realm of the spirit is called imagination their minds were architects building their possibilities and yet physically there was no physical building can i tell you this you don't have to move to a physical location to prosper right where you are in that one room you are constrained physically but let your mind start building tomorrow let your mind walk with the word of god and start building the next season the law of mental transformation write this down your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden it will grow any seeds that are planted and watered and it will give you abundant harvest of the same i'll take it again your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden 
your mind is likened to a garden that is so fertile it will grow any seed the seed are the ideas that you allow failure limitations success victory that soil of your mind the moment it receives seed your mind does not have the ability to on its own reject seeds you just drop it there and it begins to grow drop discouragement it will grow drop limitation it will grow drop faith it will grow drop the victory consciousness it will grow that means you must pay attention to what you drop there or oh, let me put it this way proverbs 4 23 let the bible speak for itself proverbs 4 23 keep your heart now you understand other versions say guard your heart with all diligence why for out of it are the issues of life out of that heart your mind are the issues of life write this down your prosperity will be in greater measure comma a product of your paradigm and philosophies more than a product of the economy that your prosperity will be more a product of your philosophy and your paradigm more than the economy that means it is not truly the economy of your territory that determines your prosperity but your philosophy and your paradigm no matter what changes in the economy if you don't change you will still remain poor no matter what remains the same in the economy if you change everything will change you see where we miss it now when you measure poverty from an economic standpoint you are speaking territorially the gdp and all of that but at an individual level the economy is not the reason why an individual is poor it is largely your philosophy your ideas are we together you prosper largely from your paradigm and your philosophies more than the economy the problem is not the economy the problem is your ideas your philosophies and your paradigm write this down if you attempt to change your life that means your physical reality without first changing your mind if you attempt to change your physical reality without first changing your mind if you attempt to change your physical reality without first changing your mind this is what will happen your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back to reflect the level of your thinking your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back to reflect your level of thinking if you attempt to change your physical reality without first changing your mind or your mindset your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back to default and reflect your thinking look up please um many of us here we have some of us who are pilots and so on and so forth in in aviation there is what they call the principle of cybernetics it's 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 an aviation principle it, it is a, a check and balance system to make sure that as the plane lifts it remains in its trajectory are we together now that when there is a deviation say for instance a plane lifts and is going this way there is a degree to which the plane cannot deviate beyond that level the principle of cybernetics will kick up to bring the plane back to its course are we together now that is how your mind works another example is the thermostat the thermostat of an iron as you use it to press your clothes when you put it and set it at a level the moment it gets hot beyond that level that temperature it will off this is how our mindsets are so there is a programming that says you should never have more than 100,000. 
If for any reason someone blesses you with one million, while you are dancing, your mind interprets it as a mistake. Because based on that mindset, it's illegal to be holding that amount. I am saying that your body will start creating behaviors. This is a law that will make you waste that money back to the level where your mindset says, now you are proper. This is why you see people, no matter what money comes, they keep recycling back to a particular range. It is not just demons. It is a law of mental transformation. So, you can find out someone who your mindset has pegged along a particular quality of living. You have not evolved to a superior version of yourself by changing your belief systems. According to the law of time and chance, one miracle will happen for you. This is why people win lotteries and win millions of dollars. As they are dancing, their mind is saying, this is a mistake. Your mindset has the assignment of making sure your physical reality is consistent with your level of thinking. Anytime your physical reality is more than your level of thinking, your mindset will fight that result until it brings you back. The same way, if your mindset is higher than your physical reality, your mindset will start compelling behaviors that will move you out of that realm to the realm that is consistent with your thinking. Please, brothers and sisters, understand what I'm teaching you. This is not some Scientology. This is scripture. That means I can start from one room, but I pick up my Bible. I pick materials of men and women and I begin who have these results and I begin to engage with the spirit I am learning the word of God listen carefully I am learning the ways of God from that one room with a cup of Gary with a cup of rice a window that is leaking a roof that is leaking but I am in that room I may not go out because I don't have the physical resources to take me out of that realm but I can allow my mind to travel with the word of God to the place where I want to come to physically can I tell you this your mindset is the authorized escort that leads you to where you want to go. Your mindset has to go to that realm and verify. Then come and pick your body to that realm. Please pay attention to what I'm teaching you. So, if you want to move out of that one realm, that one room, for instance, I'm using one room, not, not that there's anything particularly wrong, but we desire to move to higher levels. Is that true? So assuming you are in, in a negative condition, you are hungry, nobody is helping you, no destiny helper, no nothing. From that one room, you are learning the law of honor. From that one room, you are learning relationships. From that one room, you are learning scriptures. You are listening to a message. Can I tell you? Your mindset will start forcing you to leave that room. Not by looking for rent. Just pay attention to what I'm telling you. Hmm. You are in this room now. Watch this. No helper. No help from anywhere. The Holy Ghost says, you just give me your mindset and let's travel. Pay attention. Listen carefully. What I am telling you is powerful. This is how God brought us here. Please listen, 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 listen. Please don't just shout anyhow. Sit down and listen. This, this, this night's teaching, I'm teaching from the depth of my heart. I want you to understand what I'm saying. Are we together? Let me tell you what will start happening. Because the power of God is at the back of that law. That whoever gets transformed should not remain at the level that is less than his transformation. It is a spiritual law. Even though it's a physical, it, the, the law is physical in manifestation, but there is spiritual power that backs it. The same power that raises a cripple from the wheelchair in a crusade ground is the same power that is back of that activity. So you are in one room somewhere, no family members, no helper. You come from a family where no one has risen. Don't try to live a fake life. We're getting there to destroy and damage this fake living. You don't have to fake what can be real. Are you together now? Now you are in that one room and you are praying and listening to messages. You may not be able to change your cloth. Nothing physical will change. You are still hungry. You are still looking for food. There are still bills upon you. But your mind is only your body that is in that realm. As you begin to grow and walk with God, let me tell you what will happen. 
the power of God in partnership with your mindset will start creating scenarios that will push you out of that place. You must leave that place to a level that becomes consistent with your thinking. Don't find, don't start wasting your time asking where am I going to. Leave that one to the intelligence of a power that is greater than you. The law of mental transformation. Most times, we live in a world that interprets your prosperity based on the physical things you're wearing. Is that true? How expensive is your material? What kind of watch are you wearing? Oh, this is five million. Wow! Five million, that means you are rich. Can I tell you, even if you give somebody a watch and a cloth of five million naira, and his mindset is 50,000, activities will happen around his life. Satan is looking for those kind of people because on legal basis, he can now cooperate with the law. You see how Satan works. Satan does not just have power on his own. His power is based on the loopholes in our obedience. So he will cash in. He becomes a destructive force that makes that law work. He will come and partner with that law to make sure you retrogress down to a point where you now fit your mindset. It's the same thing that happens to children in school. So, a child grows and the father keeps telling him or the mother, you are dull, you are a stupid child, you will not amount to anything, we are poor. Make sure when you see other people, know you are not part of them. Let me tell you what you are doing. You are programming something in that child. When that child gets to school, the mindset will interpret anything he does correct as a mistake. When that child fails and he brings back a poor result, that result is now consistent with his mindset. What most parents would do, I don't mean to look down on parents and their, their approach to training children, is that in anger for wasting your school fees, you will fight and box and beat that child. Out of fear, he will go back and write one exam and get 60 over 70. His mindset will say, this is wrong. That 60 over 70 is not consistent with the kind of thinking. And sooner or later, he will return back. The real way to grow is to change. This is powerful. The law of mental transformation. The moment you find yourself looking for money, you have missed the law. You will never find money. Money is not missing. Don't look for it. It is attracted by who you are becoming more than what you do. Becoming is greater than doing. Your evolution and your transformation is greater than what you do. Can I tell you this? You will prosper largely because of who you have become more than what you do. But the people that do know their God, it starts with knowledge. Listen carefully. It says they shall be, become, then they shall do exploits. It starts with knowledge, transformation, then action. Most people get it the other way around. So you find many people, Christians, what business can I do to prosper me? What job can I get to prosper me? You are missing it. You can do 30 things, you will get the same result if it's the same mindset doing them. It is not the business that is failing. It's the mindset that is doing the business that is making it fail. Are we together now? That is why the wealthy are not wealthy because of the business that prospered them. The wealthy are wealthy because of the mindset that made the business they are doing to prosper. Every business that you are, you are failing at, someone is succeeding at. The difference is not the business, it's the mindset. When you have a car and you drive that car to a ditch, don't blame the car. The car was supposed to obey every direction you take it to. So if your incompetence as a learner takes, tells the car to go to the left, it will obey you. When you see that car hitting the tree, police does not arrest the car. They arrest you. Because the problem is not the car. The problem is the driver. That driver is your mindset. Are, are you learning now? Please come, Minister Kayo. They just come for a moment. Let me just use you for an example. Watch this. This body you see, everybody look up and learn. This body you see is only an instrument of execution. This body does not have a will of its own. 
Anything you see the body do that translates to the result of your destiny is only obedient to your mindset. If I take my hand and I slap this man, the hand is innocent. It is the mindset that told the hand to slap. Are we together now? If I take a gun and I go to kill, the gun is innocent. The mindset instructed the body to hold the gun till it kills because it believes it cannot prosper by dignity. So your body is only a slave to your thinking. When a man slaps his wife and beats the wife, there is a mindset that teaches you that if you beat the living daylight out of your wife, she will respect you. Maybe it came from culture. So your body becomes a slave to that thinking. Now, let's assume, God forbid, but let's assume this man is an arm robber. Shoot this arm robber and let him fall to the ground. Let's also assume that there is another man standing here. Come, you sit back at your keyboard, eh? Watch this. Let's assume this man is a pastor. Shoot two of them when they fall down. Do you call this an arm robber dead body? Do you call this a pastor dead body? So who was really the pastor? And who was really the arm robber? Not the bodies. They are all called dead bodies. Now watch this. Let's assume this man is an arm robber. There is a mindset making him to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It, this man is a pastor. There is a mindset making him to preach the gospel and to love Jesus Christ. By the time this man gets saved, he can come here and the one's arm robber suddenly changes. His body did not change. His face did not change. His voice did not change. The only thing that changed was his spirit and his mindset. So when you want to change men, what do you really change? So why have you been focusing on changing clothes and changing cars and changing jobs? It looks like the obvious problem, but it is not the right one. You have changed every other thing except the real thing that needs change. Can I tell you, when everybody is wrong, it's proof that the problem is your lens of sight, your mindset. Is someone learning? So when the Holy Spirit comes and wants to build you, he will not give you capital for a business. You see some of those prayers we are praying, is the mercy of God that is making that prayer not to be answered. Because God does not want you to waste money. God, if you can just give me five million in this Abuja, I promise you, you don't even need to come and help me again. You just give me five million and I will use the brain God gave. And you see, in God's mind, all you are saying is, Lord, mercy. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm confused, but I need help. And he comes to you. He gives you a book and he gives you a message. Go and meet somebody who is struggling financially and give him a teaching and say, can you listen to this? He said, no, you are wasting my time. All I need is money. And you are telling him, I want to help you. I shared it last week. This man can remove this beautiful attire he's wearing. Not to insult, we pray that God transforms them. But you go to the outskirts of the city where you meet all these rough boys. Again, you know what is rough about them, right? It is not the body. Always remember this body has always been obedient. It is the mindset that told the body to smoke. It is the mindset that told the body to sleep under a bridge. It is the mindset that told the body to go and look for where there is something to smoke. The body is innocent. Remove this same clothes and give those boys to wear. In one week, their mindset will tell on the cloth. This cloth is clean. It did not iron itself. The body did not make it happen. It's the mindset that told the body to be sure that it is neatly dressed. So all of the confusion around our lives, we blame our bodies, we blame all of this. It is our refusal to be transformed. This is not just for your finance, it's for your life. We've dealt with the subject of mindsets. We come from different cultures. We come from different backgrounds. We've gone through different levels of whatever it is. Again, if this man has never experienced favor in his life, let's assume that he came, respectfully speaking, from a polygamous family and he went through all kinds of things. He failed. He did 10 years to finish primary school. Eight years to finish secondary school. Another 10 years to finish university. By the time he comes for koinonia and I say favor, his mindset rejects that prayer because that has not been captured in his reality. If I say diligence to work hard, he will say amen because that's what he knows. If I say favor, he wants to say amen, but his mind is saying, what is favor? 
it will scan the archive of your destiny and say there's no such thing as that so don't receive it are we together can i tell you if you are yet to get a job thank god because you have the time to change quickly so that by the time that job comes is the renewed is the enlightened version of you that is admitted there most people complain and waste time and sit from morning till night blaming god blaming parents blaming wealthy people and blaming serious people for their conditions this is only the first law now this is where i have a problem with the imbalanced teaching that just give and your life will change it's not true you you are seeing it now right because there are many people who as they are putting their hands to give the realm of the spirit is ready to bring you the favor but the level of mental transformation that can take that favor and translate it to a blessing is not there so spiritual blessings keep coming in a bag that is full of holes listen to me it was not oil and a vessel that was equal to profit it was oil and plenty vessels when the prophet diagnosed her situation he said the problem is not the oil the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel carrying it if the vessel is small the oil will look small he said madam go and borrow vessel enlarge your capacity that anointing it is not your tight that is not working it is not your giving that is not working it is the vessel through which the answers come in even if rain falls from morning to night and it's only a cup you have outside if we are to use the rain based on the size of your cup we'll say it only drizzled whereas it was a, an avalanche it's just your cup that made it look like it is not raining are we blessed when i found this principle i began to rejoice i made up my mind that i won't fake anything brothers and sisters drink your gary with honor don't rush the season in your life now because you will miss it you will look for it and not find it again it will take a telescope to look back and say where am i coming from transformation that is lasting wealth that does not fail that's why you see wealthy people even when they lose money or lose whatever it is it doesn't really bother them because the moment they lose money their mindset kicks in and says it's a mistake you shouldn't be poor and the holy spirit will start working with that mind to find a way of bringing you back do you believe what i'm teaching you Look up, please. If Baba Deboe walks into this place right now and says, I am hungry, look up. How many of you say, How is that my business? There are restaurants, there's one in Jabi, there's one in Wuse. Is that how you respond? Some of you will say, thank you, Jesus. I have been praying for you. will run, leave this colonial as it is now and run and go somewhere and make sure you get the meal and come and kneel down and say please eat it in my presence and bless me do you know why look at this because his level of transformation does not allow that condition to exist in his life can i tell you there is a level of transformation that if you get to it is only millionaires that have that kind of mindset and if you have that mindset and there is nothing in your hand the law of god's justice will force you to have the resources that match that mindset oh goodness my god help your people believe that i'm not just here wasting my time that means if you have the mindset of a millionaire now and you are in one room the law the power that backs this law will interpret it as a lie god will raise a destiny helper a business anything to shift you so what you do is not really the problem is who you are are we together can i be honest with you i want to say something now when i started ministry i used to go and preach and sometimes now I, I'm, I'm i have never preached for money it has never been about giving i love jesus with all my heart and for as long as i live he becomes my motivation are we together but when i started preaching i remember when i would go and minister somewhere and sometimes is when I climb my bike going back home, they will now stand as if they are bribing me and bring out 2A and just count maybe 1,000 or 500 and say, Man of God, may the Lord honor you. Thank you for coming for this meeting. I never felt bad 
because it was only my body that was in that realm my mind was already years ahead of my body and I knew my mind would pick my body to a place where I'll be blessed I never told anybody I am growing the moment I focus on growing everything including the way they treated me as I traveled began to grow can I tell you this everything is waiting for you to grow to grow too now I'm going to demonstrate something that many of you have watched me do it can, can I have a few people gentlemen sorry for inconveniencing you please come let's have like um, I need at least six people one two three one two three four five six three of you stand here please facing one another no three stand here three stand here everybody watch and don't let the devil deceive you to believe you know what I'm saying just pay attention to what I'm saying because this is how the devil cheats people in church now watch this please go back guys this is what I want you to learn please if you can lift your right hand anything you can find whether your watch just lift anything up that represents your results watch this these are all the things that you want now he's lifting money now he's lifting all of this these are different dimensions in life watch this the way God programmed life is that you don't all these things they are lifting lift it guys are needed in your destiny but to start looking for them one by one is a burden God did not give you are you getting what I'm saying most of us when God tells you you need influence you need relationship you need a media ministry you need finances you need to travel abroad how do you start looking for these things one by one how old will you become before you get them let me show you how it works you don't look for money you never find it every realm and every level in your life has the possibilities attached to it to come if this is level one there is something that should come to level one if this is level two there is something that should come to level two you don't bring them by getting them you bring them by growing let me show you how the law works for every step I take come close to watch this I'm in one room poor and broke from a family where nobody has risen but I'm listening to Joshua Selman's message and he's preaching and I'm listening to it Lord I know that you are changing me watch this I don't even know that these things are coming closer to me because I can't see them I'm still in the one room let me show you how the law works God has called you to be an entrepreneur. He has called you to be a man of God. Now, I'm listening to Miles Muro's materials. I'm listening to all of these things. Oh, there is something called the law of honor. That honor is the key to access. I've grown. Watch this. Are you seeing that now? Everything you are looking for is also looking for you. But it is not looking for this version of you. Please go back, guys. Is someone learning now? There is a version of you that wants to get this. A version of you that wants to sit in business class. You sit with business class with only 100 naira in your pocket. You are not yet there. So you go back. You know you have entered a realm because everything around you grows to support that realm. You cannot buy a jeep and be looking for one gallon of fuel to fuel it. You are not there. Are you seeing now? If it is by growth you get to a point where you can buy a jeep then other supporting areas would have grown to make fueling a car not an issue this is the mistake and the fallacy of a fake life you came to church sit down and learn watch this now because for some of you I'm showing you a graphic picture of what God is doing with you now you are seated in that house and you are saying Lord will you ever lift me and then you keep learning and then you keep learning and then you keep learning one day somebody just calls you and says where are you is the law of time and chance happening remember the power of God is supervising that law you're a businessman someone now says can you help me sell one land um, and you sell it and make 300,000 it is small compared to the kingdom financier billionaire you are to be but it is a test it is only God showing you that this thing is working now you keep engaging these laws a time will come 
where even you cannot push them away the moment you are growing even if you try to push them they won't go you push money away it will not go because your growth has brought it to your life are you getting what i'm saying now now watch this by the time you stand this way everything has surrounded you the media interview you have always looked for you forgot about it and focus on growth the jeep that will not make people sleep now you have cars you don't even know what to do with it because they were designed to follow growth not just desire believers if you pay attention to what i'm saying you will look for me one day and say apostle thank you let's go back this is where you are my dear brother nobody knows you yet you are a man of god that god has said you will go to the nations there is temptation to live a fake life and get into premature manifestation and god says don't worry oh god but i am i am 30 years old and i don't have a car god says just focus on growing just focus on growing and while you are growing one day god will position your destiny helpers in a conference and bring you there to preach and then because you have allowed yourself to be transformed by the time you preach you see this man holding money he will carry what will be somebody's one year salary and give to you just when you want to rejoice god says ah we're still in the school of the spirit this is not all you need this is just to encourage you that it is working let's go back to class now many people out of pride just stand and start bragging and says no can i be honest with you you can go back and everything also will go back this is the mystery behind balloon success now watch this i can use willpower and i can manipulate my way to hold this whereas i have not grown the laws of god's justice system will interpret this as a lie i will lose this thing no matter how careful i am life must take me back to the real place that befits my mindset can i be honest with you my dear people hear me this is where living a fake life if you eat tomorrow's bread today you will be hungry tomorrow if you wear tomorrow's cloth today if all you have is a trouser of 500 naira iron it with honor it is only your body wearing it your mind is already in a boutique shopping for your next level of life walking with the holy spirit i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching